Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Fountain Pen Resurrection Sunday video. Today's blast from the past is this 1931 Parker Duofold. The previous three Pen Resurrections were in good shape to start with and didn't need much more than a thorough cleaning and polish. This Parker Duofold, however, looked every bit of its 91 years. I'll show you some video when I first got the pen so you can see how extensive this restoration has been. If you've ever restored something to its former glory, you'll understand just how thrilling it is to have been able to take something old and broken, get it working again, and also bring back all of its original beauty. This was a learning curve for me as I needed to improvise some methods and some tools for this project. I'm rather proud of the results, I must say. This has got to be the most exciting evening of the whole year, Christmas Eve, I must say. I can't believe it. I couldn't be more excited. And I'll show you how I did it right now. Today's fountain pen resurrection is this 1931 Parker Duofold. And what I'd like to do today is go over some of the history of this pen, go over its parts and features, show some before restoration photos, as well as video of the restoration process, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then do a writing sample. I want to start with the day that I brought this pen home from the antique dealer. Here is the video I shot of taking the pen out of the bag for the first time. And we get down to the older and more interesting finds. These were a little bit more expensive for me, but this one's pretty grimy and it looks like it's going to clean up nicely. This is another Parker and this is a Parker dual fold. It's a fairly small dual fold. I'm guessing 30s. And there is a Parker dual fold made in USA with a serial number across there and that looks very, very fine almost an architect style is ground on the both sides look at that i'm sure that will polish up nicely this is another uh, button filler i'm not sure what condition that is in but again we'll have to see whether i can use my budding pen restoration skills this beautiful fountain pen i'm sure will polish up nicely whether i can get it to write or not is another question and here are some photos I'll put up next to the restored pen for comparison. The age and the patina of the pen have been maintained as some of these scratches and gouges in the pen are permanent. I'll show the stages of restoration in a moment, but let's start with the history of this Parker Duofold. Feel free to use the chapters features to skip ahead to the various parts of the video you want to watch. The Duofold is the pen that made Parker famous. Before the big red Parker Duofold of 1921, all fountain pens were black. Parker found a way to make the hard rubber with a bright red or orange color that made it an instant hit with a public that was tired of drab writing instruments. When Schaefer introduced its streamlined balance fountain pen in 1929, Parker refined the Duofold by slightly rounding the edges and making a streamlined version. They had already offered the Duofold in three sizes, the senior, junior, and lady versions. This one here at 120 millimeters capped is a junior streamlined long Duofold and therefore dates between 1931 and 33 when the Janesville plant stopped making them. Parker also started putting the date codes on the barrel in 1934. So this pen predates the dating date wise. Yeah, that's right. Of course, Parker did their own resurrection in 1987 when they released a redesigned modern cartridge converter version of the Duofold called the Centennial to celebrate the 100 years of the company. Parker is still making the Parker Centennial fountain pen today, although they are slightly pricey. I filmed the various stages of the restoration of this pen, starting with the first attempt at polishing it. Then I tackled the challenge of getting the section off and assessing the internal state of the pen. I soaked the pen in pen flush in my ultrasonic cleaner over and over until I got the section to budge. I took this photo to illustrate just how ossified the sack was in this pen. The J bar in the photo is the newer one as the original was incredibly corroded. And the next three videos demonstrate the processes I used to get the pen into working condition. 
So although I'm not starting with this particular fountain pen in my pen resurrection uh, series, I thought I would show how I can take that gold plate and that gold nib on this Parker Duofold uh, back into sort of uh, pristine condition again using a simple jeweler's cloth. I've got some new jeweler's cloths here that I haven't used too much. The jeweler's cloths seem to be the best solution for getting these uh, gold appointments back into lustrous shape again. These polishing cloths even do a really nice job on uh, this uh, celluloid or uh, ebonite or whatever it might be, hard rubber. Uh, so I'll just show you, before I even pull the nib, I'm just going to see how bright I can get this very old ink encrusted 14 karat gold nib just by a few strokes of my jeweler's cloth. A little bit of polishing there let's do a little bit more that's just after 15 seconds of polishing and you can see the difference let's see what it does on this plate but let's just polish that clip a little bit it's about 10 seconds right there not bad it's coming up very nice so that's where I start of course I'll soak this pen and see whether I can get the section off. Obviously the sack in there is disintegrated. So this pen needs a lot more work and a lot more materials than I currently have. But I thought I'd like to show you how that can instantly brighten a, even the most corroded old fountain pen that has a gold nib and gold plate. I thought I'd make an attempt at explaining how I've approached this uh, restoration process on this uh, 1931 dual-fold. So I've got it all in pieces. I've done a lot of polishing on this. I've taken it all apart. And here are all the parts. Here's the, the barrel. And then there's the cap. And the cap has the cap liner, which screws into the top of the cap and holds the, the clip. Here's the section and the feed. And I'm going to show how I got that feed and nib out of that section and here is the gold nib it's shined up beautifully so i'll show that and of course the barrel has a blind cap on the end there's the blind cap and this button because it's a button filter goes in that hole at the bottom and attaches to the j bar it's a bar that hooks into the barrel and hooks onto the end there and when you press it together it pushes this pressure bar out and squeezes the sack of course there was no sack with this pen it was all dissolved on the inside and this is the pressure bar that came out of it and it's in really rough shape so I actually cannibalized this Parker I think it's a 1930s uh, might be 40s uh, it's a Parker Challenger and it had a pretty decent bar in it and so you just fit that inside the barrel like that and then you put the pin in through that and then when you press on it on the inside it presses that pressure bar up and I've got a sack for it as well so I'm going to film that process of adding the sack uh, to the barrel but I did want to show how I knocked out the feed so I kind of rigged up a knockout block and this is the way I did that. I got myself a, a nine millimeter socket wrench from a socket wrench set and I put a little bit of stick tack on the inside just on the rim to sort of squeeze the section when I put it down inside. I want to make sure that it won't go all the way through into something hard and put that whole kit and caboodle there on top of a piece of foam and then I took a hex wrench that had a smaller diameter than the inside of the section and then just tapped it down and as soon as it broke free it only broke free at just a tiny little bit and I just tapped it to get it moving then I pulled the whole thing out and extracted 
the feed which were coagulated with ink dried ink put a little bit of Meguiar's swirl remover number two onto my shop towel and then just continued to do circular polishes just like that just like I did the barrel and the cap over and over again and I've kind of repeated this process over the last few weeks every so often I get a few minutes and I think well I'm gonna polish that thing a little bit more and then finish up with a, a polished cloth and there we are you can see how shiny that is and then I did the same thing with all the other parts here's the cap liner that holds the the clip down I was very careful with the clip because this is plated it's not solid gold this wear right here where the plating is almost gone so that plating was already rubbed off from use so you can see how thin that is so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't polishing through it now the nib itself I got out my best jewelers polishing cloth and just ran it in circles like that and it comes up beautifully just beautifully and I took a, a q-tip with a little bit of this swirl remover on it and I just ran that on the inside to get that concave part of it and there's the nib all cleaned up the ebonite feed you can see how shiny that is now that was just caked with ink and again I say I soaked it for quite a long time and then I polished it up as well by pressing it into the polished compound and just giving it a lot of elbow grease so it comes up just shining so now I've got all my parts together I thought I would show how I'm going to assemble this whole thing but let's just put the cap together first so I'm going to take the clip and put it on the top take the cap sleeve we're going to screw that down you can see it's had someone's chewed on it but I'm going to close that down tight so it's nice and tight now let's put the the nib and the feed together in the section so I'm going to put them together so that they're lined up with that feed right where it meets the shoulders and I'm going to hold it tight like this and I'm going to press it down with my elastic into the section and there we go that just took a little bit of effort to push it in there it's very tight right now so now all I have to do is put the sack uh, on the end of the, the tail end of the section and once I get my latex sack I'll be doing that and using these spreaders here but then I'm going to take my J bar and you have to slide it in so it's beside the sack so that bar is on the inside so that's the next step and you put the section back on the barrel like that and we should be good to go with our restored pen so putting the sack on will be next so here are my pen parts I showed you how I put them all together the section is ready I've cleaned off any residual ossified sack on the end of the sections nozzle there and I've cut my latex sack to uh, size it so that it it fits right down to the base of the pen so now all we have to do is put some shellac around the end of that nozzle and fit the sack onto it using my sack spreader tool and so first thing get our lifetime supply of shellac and then just paint there we go now we insert our sack spreader I've learned just slightly inside there putting the sack spreader in my left hand there we go give it a little bit of a, of a turn to make it sure it's straight and even and we put a little more shellac just around that seam just to seal it all the way around then we're going to let that dry overnight so here we go the sack has dried 
and or the shellac is dried actually on the sack and now we have to put it in the barrel so we're going to get our bag of cocaine <coughs> sorry we're going to get our bag of talc and we're going to dredge the latex sack in some of the coke this the talc so it slides nicely inside the barrel now i'm going to make sure by looking inside the barrel that the sack goes in straight i'm going to line up my parker engraving and slide the sack in and i'm noticing i've got a bit of a crack there and now we can take the blind cap off it seems to be nice and springy so now we'll get out some waterman serenity blue and see whether this pen takes any ink i'm getting bubbles it's always good do it again just keep pushing it until i hear no more bubbles that's nice and clean get out some paper and see if the pen writes it's actually very stiff i'm surprised probably needs a little bit of time for that ink to run down into that section very very stiff for a gold nib but again stiffness doesn't have as much to do with the material as it has to do with the shape of the nib so it looks like I might have to do some more work on this nib it's a little bit scratchy so I'm going to take a look at it with my loop and a little bit of micro mesh and see what I can do let's look at the parts and features of this pen as I mentioned the junior streamlined long version of the Parker Duofold in burgundy and black here dates from between 1931 and 1933 from the top we see a black hard rubber flat top but rounded finial that screws into the cap and holds the clip the gold plated ball clip has Parker engraved down the length and is nicely springy the cap tapers up and then is straight to two gold plated rings and then the rounded end there are two breather holes in the cap as well one there and one under the clip the celluloid barrel is straight until about here where it tapers down to a black hard rubber blind cap that covers the button filler the barrel is engraved gos parker parker do a fold made in the usa the cap unscrews with about a half a rotation to reveal a black hard rubber concave section and a 14 karat gold roughly number five size nib and black ebonite feed the nib and the feed are extremely friction fit into the section the blind cap unscrews to give access to the button filler and you just press on this button the j bar deflects inside the pen and squeezes the sack which then allows you to draw up the ink the cap posts deeply and securely and makes the entire pen very nicely balanced unposted the pen is still long enough to write with comfortably now let's look at some size comparisons and here's the 1931 Parker Duofold Junior Streamlined in black and burgundy with a 1954 Parker 51, a 1965 Parker 61, a 1967 Parker 45 Insignia, and a 1920s Schaefer Black Hard Rubber. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see that the 51 is a hooded nib this is a hooded nib on the 61 this is a semi hooded nib on the 45 and we go all the way back to the 20s and a black hard rubber pen from Schaefer and a about a number four size 14 karat gold Schaefer nib now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted the dual fold is a button filler the 51 is an aerometric filler the 61 is a capillary filler the 45 is a cartridge converter pen and the Schaefer black hard rubber from the 1920s is a lever filler with a sack. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample.
And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the 1931 Parker Duofold Junior Streamlined Burgundy and Black. And before we get started with the writing, I have to tell you that this was quite a challenge to get it writing properly. Everything with the install of the nib and the sack and the feed and everything worked perfectly, but that nib uh, ended up being quite a challenge and I had to do a lot of work on it to get it to write. But let's give it a shot here and see how well it writes today. I think this will be a work in progress. This is a 1931 Parker dual fold and it has a number 5 size 14 karat gold nib and the ink as you saw in the inking is Waterman's Serenity Blue let's check the wetness as you can see it's really really dry I'm having real difficulty getting ink through this uh, it's not the feed so much I don't think it's the nib is really really tight I'm gonna tell that when I'm writing with it because as a gold nib it is really stiff as far as gold nibs goes this is probably the stiffest I've ever felt said the actress to the bishop and it's got a good deal of feedback as well I took a long time with this nib under my loop taking a look at it the tines are in alignment one of the tines has a more proud uh, tipping material on it than the other but right now I've worked on it for gee yesterday I worked on it for about an hour I think uh, going through all the different grades of micro mesh and it's writing now as you see it's still very very dry but I'm trying to open up those tines uh, so I've been trying I tried the uh, uh, seven strokes to inky happiness but this nib is so stiff it doesn't really even want to give I felt steel nibs that have more flex to them than this gold nib that it isn't the material that makes it stiff or flexible it is the shape of the nib and this particular shape nib is very very stiff and the line this nib makes is 0 0.4 millimeters or a western extra fine or a Japanese fine you can see how it's starting to get starved of ink and I don't think it's the feed I really think it's that nib is so 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 tight it's not letting ink flow through the nib slit and for our quote and for some reverse writing Look at that. Isn't that interesting? It writes better in reverse than it does this way. So it means to me that that nib needs a lot more work. And let's try some quick writing. You can see the issues I'm having with the flow of this pen so once it gets going it's okay but then it closes right down so a little bit of work is needed so what are my thoughts on this fountain pen well i was really quite stoked when i got this pen because it looked like it had been neglected for many many years but that it, it looked like i had a rough diamond on my hands i could see that it was a 14 karat gold nib uh, and that it looked like it was in relatively good shape just neglected and it was a great project opportunity as well because I had to replace the sack and I had to polish up the nib and getting it and get it writing replace the J bar inside or all kinds of things to do 
uh, new techniques to learn, that kind of thing. So I'm actually really proud of this pen. Everything went very, very well. Uh, getting the old ossified sack out of there was quite a challenge. Uh, getting it all polished up was a lot of fun because it just sort of came alive under my hands. The more I polished, the newer it looked. And I'm especially happy with how that nib came out. It's just glorious. And everything went really, really well for a couple of weeks until I just inked up the pen. And then I was disappointed when I put the nib to the page and found out how stiff and unforgiving that Parker nib is. I, I was actually quite surprised because I expected it to have the same kind of behavior as this 1920s uh, Schaefer black hard rubber. I haven't even inked this pen. I haven't finished uh, restoring this one yet. But just pushing this nib on the page, you can see how flexible that is. So this, even without inking it for the first time, you can tell what that's going to be like. So as I was all excited for this nib, and then you push this one on the page and it doesn't move. Look at that, putting a lot of pressure on it, it's not moving. Some of my steel Chinese nibs flex more than this. It's sort of a myth that all gold pens from the past are that flexy kind of nib that you, uh, you've heard about and that all you have to do is get one of these uh, vintage gold pens and then you'll have a, a flex writer's dream. It's not true. It all depends on the shape of that nib. And when you look at this nib in profile, you can see how domed that is. That's an arch right there, folks, going from there to there. And that's what makes it stiff. That's what she said. But if you look at this one, it's relatively flat. Look at how flat that one is. Just take a look at these two nibs and see how flat in profile the Schaefer is from the 1920s and how arched the Parker is, especially down at the point, how it turns down like that. So, and it's got a, an interesting grind on it as well, I've discovered. I don't know quite what that is. It looks like it's been ground on both sides for it to be kind of an architect, but it doesn't write that way at all. But interesting, interesting stuff. A really nice project to work on. Uh, the pen came up beautifully. It looks beautiful. Now I know that if I spend some more time on that nib and get it writing a little bit wetter, that it's going to be a fine, fine pen. Um, it doesn't need to be flexible to be a nice writer. It just needs to have a lot more flow to it. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.